scary. I know I'll never forget because I cried because <laughs> I figured my home and everything was gone. But, uh, you know, and then you think, well, you'll never go back again. No. No, we never did. After Pearl Harbor was bombed, which was on a Sunday night, December the 7th, the very next night, we had an air raid in Manila, in where we lived. And uh, Dad took us, we were at home because it was at night when the sirens, the air raid sirens went off. And um, Dad took us all down to the first floor of our house and we all just cuddled up together. And my thoughts at that time was, what if a d bomb drops on top of us? and and you, somehow or another, you, you, you don't think you're going to die. You think, what if they're all dead and I'm left here by myself? The bombing of Cavite was at noon that, that Wednesday morning. And uh, we were eating lunch at the ship service store, which is on the naval base, but not where Dad worked. This was where the naval hospital was. And the siren went off, and of course everybody knew they had to get shelter. And there were quite a few sailors in there eating at the same place we were, and they told us where to go. And uh, of course I laid down there on my stomach, and, and what I did was pray. <laughs> I prayed a lot. And uh, then it, it was three hours we were in there when the siren went, all clear siren went off. And so we started coming out of under there. And the first thing I saw was the sun. And you could look at the sun. It was big, bright red. And the reason we could look at it was because of all the smoke from the bombing from Cavite. See, Sangley Point, where we were, was across the, the water, there's a body of water but from, our, from the naval base. It didn't take long to get there, it just went around, but, uh, and it wasn't far from us. You could hear the bombing when it was going on, but they were bombing the naval base. They didn't bomb the hospital. But, but because of the smoke, you could see that red sun. And my first thought as an 18 year old was that God was on Japan's side because, you know, Japan's flag is the rising sun. And that's what I thought to myself. And then we looked over across the street from where we were, where the Naval Hospital was, and we could see cars just lined up that all this time were bringing wounded people into the hospital from Cavite. And, uh, I actually saw somebody get out of the car holding his entrail, you know, his stomach had been torn open and he was holding it, but he got, you know, and that, so the, that's how long we were in there. They had time to bring the wounded to this hospital. Well, I had, I had been sick. Ever since we left the, the country and came into Manila, I wasn't feeling good at all. The people that we were staying with, were that sharing the apartment with, the, the lady was, was a Korean, Japanese. And my sister, Rini, was the only girl besides me that was going in because they weren't going to take her children or take her either because they were half Japanese and she was Japanese. She told them in Japanese, she spoke to them in Japanese and, and said that I was sick. And I think they didn't put up any uh, argument about it because they could tell I was pale and, you know, look sick. So they, they said it was okay for me to stay. And so they took my brothers, my dad, their, her husband and her son-in-law and uh, 
my brothers, three, three brothers, and uh, Rini. Rini was the only girl, and they took them, and I didn't know where they were going. I have heard and know what happened in the prison, where they went, you know, because since then they told me how they got there, and, and they went by truck, and they, the Japanese didn't even know where, where the place was. They had to ask the people in there how to get to Santa Tomas. And Santa Tomas was a university, the oldest university in Manila, run by a Dominican priest. And they had offered before the, uh, when, the, when the war started, they had offered that they could use, the, if the Japanese, you know, was going to confine us, that they could use that. In fact, the Americans picked that place out because the Japanese had no idea what they were going to do with all these people. And that's where they took them. Well, I stayed in the hospital where they treated me. And while I was in the hospital, my dad came into the hospital from the camp because he, he had had a very bad leg that he'd had all his life from an automobile accident. And it needed to be treated. And being in the prison camp where he didn't have anything to treat it with, it got infected. So they had to bring him into the hospital. And uh, so what Dad, I, I cannot remember uh, right offhand how long we were there but uh, maybe a week or two. And when Dad went back, to, was released to go back in the camp, I went back into the camp too. I went into the camp with when he did. Well, you know, like I told you, I didn't get to go with, with them. So I, I, well, they just didn't know where that, what was gonna happen. They just, it was just like, we don't know, you know, you just have to go with the flow and, and uh, see what happens. Well, you know, like I told you, I didn't get to go with with them. So I, I well, they just didn't know where that what was going to happen. They just it was just like we don't know. You know, you just have to go with the flow and and uh, see what happens. Um, what year was that? Hmm. What year? 1942. When they came in to re to release us. They fought the Japanese uh -huh. in Manila. Through the city? In the city. that They would not uh, surrender like we did. Mm -hmm. So they, Manila was just tore up. They had to bomb it, and they, they fought house to house. And the, and the Japanese killed the, Fili the Filipinos, just Avery, massacred them. Uncle Fred left the Philippines three months before the war. He uh, he didn't graduate either, but he wanted he wanted to come to the United States and finish his school, and so he was able through friends uh, that that knew this uh, uh, captain of a merchant marine ship, and he he got him a job on it where he could work his way to the to San Francisco, and then he would go from there, and uh, but what happened was. When he got to Hawaii on the way to San Francisco, they stopped in Hawaii, and my dad had contacted my uncle, um, my mother's sister and her husband and two children lived in Hawaii. He was working at Pearl Harbor, and uh, he was a retired uh, Navy man and was working at Pearl Harbor as a civilian. And uh, dad told him that Fred was coming through there so he met the ship, and he talked the captain into letting Fred stay there because he would get him a job at Pearl Harbor. And uh, of course, we didn't know this till after the war was over. But he got him a job in Pearl Harbor, and uh, they were there when Pearl Harbor was bombed, but they were not at Pearl Harbor because it happened on a Sunday. And uh, because it happened on a Sunday, they were home. They weren't working. After uh, the war started, he got to the United States and went wanted went to Kings Point in New York as, uh, to college. That's a Merchant Marine Academy, 
and he talked his, he got into that academy without a high school diploma and did four years of college in two years, which was, he said, don't ever try it. It's hard, hard work. You study every day, every night. But he uh, graduated from that in two years, and then they gave him a, a choice of being a merchant marine officer or a naval officer. And he said he wanted to join, he wanted to be in the United States Navy. And they also asked him what theater he would like to go to. And he said, uh, Far East, he wanted to. So he was on a, on a destroyer as a ensign in the Navy and came to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, we found out. He came into our camp after we were liberated because he helped, that destroyer helped in the Battle of Leyte mm -hmm. of getting the Philippines back. And uh, he came into our camp after we were liberated, but we were still in there. Mm -hmm. And we, we hadn't seen him in all those three years.